Hello and welcome to RTC TV. I'm your host, Abby Malko, and here with me today is head coach for the girls basketball team, Tony Stasiak. How are you today? Great, Ab. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Coach, great win last night against Triton on the road, Wednesday night game. It's finals week, and you are halfway through your season up to this point. Will you explain to me the exhaustion with the girls, if they're feeling any, and how you're going to get through your conference game on Friday, excuse me, on Saturday before the holiday break? It has been a grind. Uh, we've played more games to this point. Um, as of last night, we lead the state in wins at 11. Nobody's got that many games in, and that's uh, obviously one of those unique things. I think it's schedule-wise, but after the winter we had last year and how crazy January got, I didn't mind front-loading the schedule because we thought, you know, get the games in in November and early December when the weather's usually pretty good. Uh, but with that, uh, you, you've you've really gotten kind of like an NBA schedule in, in many weeks where you're playing two or sometimes three games in a week, and and that's been a grind. But um, you know, it, it, obviously it's gone quite well so far. Um, you know, some people say you're 11 and 0. I said we've showed up and we've gone 1 and 0 on 11 different times. That's that's been our whole focus. It's it's never talking about an undefeated season or anything like that. It's just win the next one. Focus on that one, win the next one. Um, you know, this is finals week for us, and that's a, another unique dynamic to it because, um, you know, we pride ourselves on having scholar athletes in the girls' basketball program, and we always try at the end of the year to have every girl recognized. And, and, and once in a while we've gotten that, but at least we're very close. Uh, so we take that seriously, as do the girls. And, um, you know, we're coming off an, a series of kind of emotional or tough games. Um, the, you know, this, you look at the last five-game stretch from Thanksgiving, a big rivalry game against Winnemac, come back, big rivalry game, tough physical game against Culver, on the road to open conference at Southwood, who was really good and physical at home. Um, then we play Wabash, a team we hadn't beaten in seven years, and that was a physical, tough game. Turn around a couple days later, uh, playing Triton, a veteran team that had beaten us two years in a row. And, you know, this has been a rough stretch. Uh, there's some sickness going through the team. So it's one of those one of those years where we need <laughs> – Christmas break will come at a great time. Uh, we're not overlooking North Miami whatsoever. But at the same time, you know, once we get through Saturday afternoon's game, uh, we need Christmas break, and we'll definitely relish that opportunity to rest. But I can't ask for any more than what the girls have given us this year. It's been outstanding, great group to work with, and, and it's been a lot of fun to this point. And you have quite a few athletes on your team, not just in the sport of basketball that play a lot of sports. Two of your girls are Division One athletes committed to play softball. So not only your athletic ability, your speed and quickness, you don't have much height, but that hasn't seemed to hinder you in any of the games so far. So what do you give credit to with the girls as far as staying undefeated other than their athletic ability? What do they have mentally as a team? What, what do you contribute that to? Yeah, they're pretty mentally dialed in. We only have one senior, but um, you know, I've always – respected and, and wanted to have basketball players who played multiple sports because I think that competitiveness and toughness situations pays off on all levels. Um, so rarely rarely do we have anybody that focuses on basketball, but we have a lot of athletes that we share with. And I'm fine because, um, you know, it's always one of those things. I think it helps the school spirit, the school sports, and then it gets you ready. Uh, you can take a lot of shots in the gym and, and work out on your game for sure. But, you know, when you're traveling around the country playing softball or playing volleyball or or running track or soccer whatever that's a competitiveness that you can't always get just kind of working out on your own so we've always valued that and I think it's been a key to our success is that we embrace multi-sport athletes and I think it makes for a tougher athlete uh, mentally and physically and I think we, we try to play that way um, you know this group has been pretty mentally tough uh, been able to be basketball savvy and be athletic. There's a lot of games if you watch us. Rarely do we ever sit in the same defense for more than one or two possessions. We're mixing and matching. We're changing rotations on the floor offensively and doing different things. And you can't do that unless the team's really mentally into it, mentally tough. And, and we've played a pretty good schedule and had some pretty tough games. It hasn't always been easy, uh, but we've always seemed to bounce back. And um, you know that's just a sign, I think, of a, a true competitor. And, and the teams are that way. Our team's been that way all year and haven't really questioned their effort or their toughness. Um, and that that's again makes it for a fun year when as a coach you don't have to teach effort and attitude you can work on x's and o's and they really respond well to that absolutely and speaking of only having one senior you do have three juniors who have been together and a transfer junior as well so only having one senior but your four juniors have played a big role in your leadership what do you 
how do you think your leaders are on the team as far as the whole team versus having one senior? Yeah, I think you look at you've got Bailey Abbott as a senior in the junior four of Ali Larkin, Becky Malco, Alexa Holland, Keaton Stasiak, and there's also our starters. So that as a group has just gelled extremely well, and, and they kind of at times, I mean, share that leadership. I mean, it, Bailey's your senior. She's been around the longest. She brings the dynamic, her main sports volleyball, and that's really helped her. And, and she's an athlete. She's a role player. She knows basketball is not her sport. She accepts that. She accepts the role of her team, which is really is important for us. She's got to defend the other team's best post player. She's got to rebound, play good defense, and her passing has been outstanding this year. Um, you know, she's, she's getting a rebound and kicking it out to a guard and giving them an easy shot a lot of times or doing the dirty work inside of screening to get the guards open. And that's, that's a huge underrated role for us. And then, you know, the juniors – you know, they each kind of have their own style. Becky Malco is the quarterback of our team offensively and defensively, getting people in the right spots, getting people open, getting them the ball, um, guarding the other team's best perimeter player, getting people shots in good spots, and, and just all of those intangible things of, of a toughness uh, out on the perimeter. Um, you know, Allie Larkin has come in from Winnemac and has just fit in extremely well with what we're trying to do. Great shooter, really basketball savvy. Um, I've been impressed with her basketball IQ as much as her shot, and her shot's been really good, but also her willingness to do some other things to, to rebound for us. And, and she's a really good passer, too, and, and knows the game so well and gives us more things to do defensively with, with that kind of savviness. Alexa Holland, leading scorer for us. Um, Great three-point shooter, has really worked on her overall game, trying to get the ball to the basket a little bit more, shooting that mid-range game. And, and she really likes it when we press, and that fits her style. So when we get up and down the floor, she's usually at her best. And then Keaton Stasiak, just uh, kind of one of those whatever it takes. That, that's always been her style is if we need to play inside and, and go guard somebody six inches taller, okay, uh, handle the ball like the other night, you know, handle the ball against uh, you know, our spread offense. And when they have to put a post player on her, she can take advantage of that. And just, you know, her scoring comes and goes, and she understands that. But, you know, last night against Triton, I think she was 6-7 of seven from the free throw line in the fourth quarter, and that was really big. So um, just a group that's clicked really well, and I think share that leadership. Bailey is the senior, but I think they work really well together, and they all kind of share that. It's not me and you, it's us. And, and then the bench kids have kind of followed that lead, because we do. We're young after that. We got... Uh, Alexa Garrison, Hannah O'Dell, two sophomores, getting their first major dose of varsity experience. Morgan Ruff, who's a freshman, played some JV early on, is now a full-time varsity player. Her first high school experience. And then Kennedy Musselman, Alexis Elliott, um, Grace Pfeiffer, three more freshmen come off the bench at split time JV and varsity. So we're pretty young on the bench. So we've needed all five of those to play well and lead those younger kids, and they certainly all have. And a deeper bench than you even had last year. I know you had a pretty short team. And so getting the two transfers from Winnemac, being Allie Larkin and Morgan Ruff, they seem to, like you said, get along with the team really well. But sometimes having two girls come in, especially if it's two from the same team, you almost wonder how it's going to work. But it has been such a blessing for you guys. Kind of talk about how great Morgan and Allie give to the team. Yeah, I think there's just – that doesn't work unless both sides work at it. And I think the returning players – got to know them over the summer. You know, that's where we do our summer leagues and we went to team camp and you get a chance um, to kind of gel there a little bit and get to know each other and that that's helped. Obviously being really good basketball players helps too, but they're they're good people and they've blended in well and our returners accepted them, embraced them, knew knew that that things kind of clicked right away. Um, and they've kind of blended in as well. You know, they didn't come in, it's all about me. It's just kind of fitting in the roles of, of the team. And, and that's a, sometimes a tricky dynamic. But same thing there. We got two new players there, but a lot of new freshmen in the program. Our JV's pretty much entirely freshmen, too. So we had a lot of new faces. Uh, and that's just a credit to the kids to basically get on the same page so quick because the JV's had a really good season, too. We, we've got. Uh, you know, the JV's just only lost a couple of games. So, you know, we're having a really good season program-wise, and it's because of our leadership and the ability to get on the same page, work hard together, and maybe sacrifice some of yourself for the betterment of the team, knowing that if the team plays well, then, then your opportunities will come back around sometime. Absolutely. And speaking of Allie and your daughter, Keaton, you had a couple knee injuries this summer and not looking so great with your lower numbers and seeing two knee injuries. But if you watch them play, as I have quite a few times, you wouldn't even notice unless you see Keaton's knee brace that they did have injuries. So how impressed are you with their comeback and the fact that they're playing looking as if they haven't even been injured? Yeah, that's been great. And that's that's tough because, uh, you know, obviously with Keaton, there's the dad role with the coach role. And I haven't quite 
been comfortable with that yet, especially the knee part. Uh, that kid just uh, hats off to her. I mean, to be released four months after surgery is just a credit to her, and it wasn't. I, I kind of kept hands off on that. That was a mom-daughter kind of rehab type thing, and I didn't want to get a sense in myself if, if – you know, if I pushed it too much and something happened, then then that would be awful. So I was there as a supportive role. I said, I'll do whatever you need. But uh, my wife gets the credit for kind of they rehab together. They worked out together. And, and Keaton just had it in her mind to make it back as quick as possible. I was thinking beginning of January she'd be back. And I didn't tell her no, but I said, that's that, that's where, that's six months. And you can decide what you want to do from there. And literally her surgery was July 4th. Uh, every day, including the night of surgery, she did something in a rehab, even when she went to Florida over fall break, still rehabbed on the beach, did everything, something every day, and, and that, that allowed her to come back quicker. You know, and Allie's had a couple knee surgeries too, and she continues to battle and be out there. And I, I think, you know, hopefully that's contagious in a good way to the other kids, not that they get knee injuries, but the fact that they see two kids just continue to grind it out and battle and, and, and come through. And, and um, you know, Bailey's battled some foot injuries, and I know Becky's had a foot issue, and, and it seems like everybody's had a little bit of something. But like we said, it seems like in our program over the last few years, those, those bruises and um, those scars are, are like, badges of honor like that that just is kind of signifies the toughness but you're willing to kind of sacrifice for the team and and to have everybody go through that everybody respects because they know somebody's got something probably injury wise they've been through and they're still here and they're still battling day in day out and that's that's contagious in a good way as well I know we've said that a lot so far but a lot of those things help build on other things too. Absolutely, and I think just the program and, and the way you coach and your assistant coach is just kind of the culture that you bring about. It's not, you know, when when can we get back, latest, you know, as fast as we can get back for the team. So that brings me to my next question. If you were to describe this team that you have now being undefeated, knowing how athletic they are, not really height as any help, what, what would be some words to describe this team and maybe the staples of what surrounds them? Boy. I don't know. I, I think there's certain attributes we always want to be known as. We always want to be known as as a team that works really hard regardless of the score of the opponent. That you know when you line up against us, it's going to be a 32-minute battle. may not go well X's and O's wise all the time, but we are in it and, and are going to compete and battle every single possession and then find a way to win at the end if we're fortunate enough to do so. Um, and just that toughness, tenacity, togetherness, those things, I think, you know, when you sacrifice and work hard and have each other's back and compete and are good people and do it with a, in a good approach and think about your team as a family, those things all work together. And those seem to be the things that successful teams share in any sport. I mean, if you look back at really good teams, really good programs, is you know, I tend to like sports a little bit and follow it just a tad. But as you look back at teams at any level of anything, those are some of the traits. Um, you know, the, the the me first players and those kinds of things look good on ESPN, but, you know, they don't ever win championships. And not that it's always about championships, but, you know, sometimes you can be a championship person or a championship team, and then you get rewarded sometimes and you don't. But it, it, the sports are all about the attempt at being the best you can be, and you can't always see everything on a scoreboard. Now, the scoreboard's been good to us this year, but like I said, we're not necessarily all about where we're at now it's the fact that each night we've showed up competed and we've been fortunate enough to win so you know hopefully a team that's that's tough competitive plays the game the right way is fun to watch and plays for each other those are the things I think that people have told me that they appreciate seeing by our team and that's great because when people say they love how your team plays they get after it they represent the community well as a coach you, you can live with whatever the scoreboard shows and obviously that's been good to us but you know those traits will lead us down the road uh, when tough times do happen. Absolutely, I, I agree with everything. And being undefeated, you know, you're 11 and 0. A lot of times when you have a loss, there's many lessons you can learn. So you guys haven't had a loss this season. So how do you stay sharp? What are a couple strategies that you bring to every single game that allows you to be successful? Well, like I said, it's not been easy. I mean, if you look at some games, uh, we've had spurts that haven't been good. So we've faced adversity. We're not blowing teams out by 40 points every night from wire to wire, tip tip to finish. Um, you know, games like LaVille were just kind of slow start and, and played sluggish and they kind of jumped on us. We learned from that at halftime. Luckily, we turned that around. But uh, we've been through a lot of different battles and we understand that 
we always talk about you play for 32 minutes. Uh, last night when we played Triton, told them before the game, this is going to be a fourth quarter game. Don't don't think that it's not going to be one way or another. Those games with Triton are always tough through the years. Uh, just their style of play and our style of play, I, I think, uh, grind each other a, a little bit. And you know, we said, hey, told them pregame, don't be. Don't be concerned. It's going to come down to the fourth one way or another. So even though we're trailing at the end of the first quarter, we come into huddle, hey, this is exactly where we thought we'd be. Trailing at half, hey, we're still right there. A little bit of lead going into the fourth, hey, it's still coming right down to where we thought we were. And and those are the kinds of things that you know you, you hope that those little adversities you learn from. And this group has. Uh, they've been great at halftime adjustments. We throw something on the board at halftime, and uh, you know, Coach Malco and, and I have really had a great year together. We're, we seem to be on the same page, and he's been just a tremendous asset. And you know, it's his varsity experience and in his coaching, um, both boys and girls, and playing experience. And, and you know, it's great to have a lot of ideas to bounce off and we work really well together and you know when we throw something up on the board at halftime they've responded each and every time so we've had some phenomenal third quarters and it's not genius X's and O's because we can throw anything we want up there but if the girls don't respond and don't take it upon themselves it's not going to work so it, it's it's maybe one percent inspiration on our part and about 99 percent perspiration on their part because they make it work absolutely and so you have you're halfway through your season had a great win last night you have one of your last conference games coming up on Saturday until you have the holiday break how do you handle the holiday break you have a stretch where you don't play many games you have the holiday tournament but until January 6th I think is the next home game against North Judson after holiday break so how do you tackle practices and keeping the girls sharp but also allowing them to get a break well we're gonna play North Miami Saturday afternoon and uh, hopefully that goes well for us and leads us into break the right way. Um, and then after that, we will come back Monday and have a shorter kind of just sort of a not really an X's and O's practice, but just kind of a conditioning, keep their legs fresh, because then we'll take the next three days off, the 23rd, 24th, 25th, and then start practice back up on the 26th. And those will be morning practices. Um, you know, it'll be a lot about break, about staying in routine as best we can. You're not at school, so you, do, you lose that a little bit. But everybody in the state's the same. There's no advantage or disadvantages. It's how each team handles it. We play South Central on January 2nd, the first game of our holiday tournament. They play this Saturday as well, and neither of us play till the second. So the days off or even, it's going to come down to how you use it the best. And we're going to use conditioning refine some X's and O's, maybe through, throw some new wrinkles in there, but not change a bunch. Obviously, things are going well. We don't have to change a whole lot, but we'll focus on some conditioning and stay sharp uh, because usually it comes in those Christmas break. The teams that can get rid of the rust the soonest usually do well in those Christmas tournaments, and, and the teams that maybe are satisfied with how well they've done maybe come back rusty and flat, and, and then you know then you, you start off the new year on a, on a bad fault. But Because we're going to need conditioning because if you look at it, Second, third, uh, which are Friday, Saturday, come back on Tuesday against North Judson, Saturday against Whitco. We're going to play four games in the span of a week coming right out of the shoots. So we're going to have to make sure we're in really good shape and ready to go for that kind of NBA schedule coming out of uh, the beginning of January. Absolutely. I think that's a good plan. I don't play anymore, so condition them as hard as you want to. But thank you, Coach. Congratulations on a great season so far, and we wish you luck in your future games and just excited to see all that Lady Zebra basketball has for us. Thanks, Ab. It's good talking to you and good seeing you. And, you know, it's always fun to to have you and the, the rest of the alumni around. I mean, that's that's cool as a coach when, when players can come back and, and help with the program. And you guys are a big part of this as well. And I hope you realize that. And uh, thanks to everybody for their support, the student support, the community support. We, we love everything we've gotten from this community. Keep supporting us. Uh, and uh, I think some even better times are ahead, hopefully, for Z Lady Zebra basketball. Absolutely. Thank you, Coach. Congrats and good luck. And thank you for viewing. This has been RTC TV. I'm your host, Abby Malko. Thanks for watching.